Hello, I'm Ted McGraw, and I'm a campaign volunteer for David Peterson, who is your Member of Parliament and your candidate for re-election in London Centre. Today I'm pleased to have with me in the studio Marie Peterson, who is David's mother, and I hope to uh, glean from Marie some of the motivation she instilled in her son to uh, go into politics and to be successful uh, as our Premier. Marie, it is, uh, I guess it is a long tradition. I know the history the, of, of your family in the city, that David went to Ryerson Public School and St. George's Public School, Central Collegiate, was a graduate of the University of Western Ontario. But what uh, some of us uh, may not know is how did he first become involved in politics? Well, I think it was a, a, a family uh, project. Um, his father was uh, on municipal council for um, ten years, eight to ten years, and uh, every uh, second year we had to go out with uh, uh, as a family and uh, campaign and ask for support uh, for his father so that he w could be elected to council. And it was always such fun. Uh, the so whole that, family did it together. Okay, so that's Clarence. Your husband uh, was involved in municipal uh, politics. That's right. And in addition to David, you have two other sons. Yes. Jim and Timothy. Right. All right. And everybody was involved in this endeavor. That's right. Okay. And then David himself, obviously, uh, as, the, as the voters will know, uh, uh, has been a member of Parliament since 1975. Uh, were you involved in his um, provincial elections? Oh, yes, very much. Here in London and in Toronto, it was great fun. And that would be all of the family members? And yes, everybody was there. Your other uh, son, Jim, is, uh, is, is also in federal politics. That's right. He's a federal MP. That's right. And can you tell me this, um, in, in those elections, uh, what kind of a role would you and, and your husband take? Well, we would sort of say, uh, now we'll do whatever you want us to do, and uh, so they directed us as to what we might do, but uh, uh, we were involved in um, office work, we were involved in door-to-door -door work, we were involved uh, in campaigning, uh, talking to people uh, across the province. That's great. Are uh, you involved in this campaign? I certainly am. You're down at headquarters working, I know that. Yes, I am. Right. Now, since uh, 1985, David has been the, the Premier, and uh, has brought in lots of good policies, I think. Uh, can you tell me um, what policies uh, you relate to and, and, and what you think of the record? Uh, well, I, I, I'm a mother, but, and right. maybe I don't speak, uh, but I do think he um, has be, had a very caring uh, attitude for people, and he has tried to bring in legislation that would help people, I mean all people, and um, I want, one, uh, his great achievements, I think, has been the environmental... Uh, the, blue, the Blue Box Program has yeah. now won a United Nations Award. Uh, yes, yes, All it right. has. And his care for senior citizens, he's attempted to keep them in their own homes rather than put them into institutions. But with OHIP uh, uh, support of homemakers coming in part-time to keep them in their homes. That's right. And I think that's marvelous. Uh, he's had great uh, feeling for child care. Um, I think he's done a great many things that are good for people. I suspect, even though you're his mother in saying this, that you might have instilled some of these uh, these values in your son. Um, well, I... Can you I, take any credit? I, no, I'm <laughs> not going to take the credit. I'll give all the credit to the community. I think the, the uh, fact that uh, we've had such wonderful teachers such wonderful leaders in Cubs, Scouts, um, Y leadership, uh, theater leadership, so many wonderful facilities uh, in London. Uh, it's just uh, been a beautiful place. Do you, do you, your your um, son is now Premier. Do you see him uh, often? Is he in town regularly? Uh, well, he has to be in town every week. Um, practically every week to meet with his constituents because they have problems he needs to hear them and uh, wh he gives a great deal of time to his family all so right we're out of time but we'll, uh, we'll ask you to vote for David Peterson again and re-elect him in London Center and uh, keep him working for all of us and thank you very much for uh, your time today thank you, thank you.
Hello, I'm Murray Hopper, and I'm speaking to you today on behalf of the Freedom Party of Ontario. With me in the studio is Mr. Lloyd Walker, the Freedom Party candidate for London Centre. Tell me, Lloyd, how does it feel to be the vice president of what is, in effect, a brand new political party, and what reaction do you get from people? Well, first off, my personal reaction is that it's probably one of the most rewarding experiences in my life. Uh, you have to remember that I'd looked for many years to see what sort of political art alternatives there were, and I have to admit that I came to the conclusion that the Liberals, NDP, Conservatives were basically so much of the same thing. They all believe they want to take your money and spend it on their agenda. Now, their agendas differ slightly, but that's... They're all just sort of, uh, in many ways, almost legitimized thieves. What happened with Freedom Party was I found a party that believes that people that work and earn money actually deserve the rewards and, and the fruits of their labor and that government should be there to provide a framework around them and to actually allow them to keep the money and use it on the basis of their choices, not the choices of what some politician or some bureaucrat would make. What uh, one single issue are people most concerned about that you've noticed in your travels? Oh, I think the big one has to be taxes. I think everyone is getting uh, very, very upset with the number of tax increases that are going on. The Liberals, of course, in their last in their last term in office have given us 30-some tax increases, which is just ridiculous to be doing that sort of thing. They've now turned around, Mr. Peterson has promised us a reduction in sales tax of 1%. And it's fascinating to hear his reasoning, and that is that by reducing taxes, he's going to create 15,000 jobs in Ontario, put a billion dollars back into the pockets of the electorate, which are all the sort of things that I agree with. But what really disturbs me is the fact that all the while they had these 30 tax increases, they never once told us the jobs that were being lost, the money that was coming out of the economy, and how much it was actually hurting us. And I think it's time that somebody has to stand up and say, taxes hurt. Right. How would you go about reducing taxation? Well, I think the first thing you must do to reduce taxation is you have to cut back government spending which means you have to introduce a lot of the programs that are currently government being involved in. You have to introduce them into the market where they can be privatized, where you can have competing services, and hopefully run those services much more efficiently. When you get that sort of efficiency in the free market, people paying for it in the free market, they'll actually end up with more money in their pocket, and the government won't need to take the money in taxes. Have you had any uh, complaints about the health care system in your travels or anything of, of that nature? I think there's always a general uh, feeling of frustration with the health care system. In many ways, it's uh, letting us down. That we're, we're told we have the best health care system in the world, but we also have what must be the most expensive health care system in the world. And it's one thing that the government of Ontario simply cannot afford any longer. They have to find ways to make the system more efficient. And I think, once again, that's introducing more and more of it into the market to get competitive services and to actually allow, hopefully, price reductions as a result of that competition. In other words, it's a question of controlling costs. Absolutely. Uh, one thing we do, we have emergency departments that uh, people go down to if they have a case of the sniffles. Someone has a cold and they go to emergency, which ties up an incredible amount of, of experienced talent, not to mention facilities, at a, at a great cost, and yet it's something that really they'd have been better off if they could pop into their local doctor or even, or even talk to their local pharmacist would probably have helped them. Well, thank you very much for those remarks, uh, Lloyd. You've been listening to uh, Lloyd Walker, a vice president of Freedom Party of Ontario who was running in London Centre. And this is Murray Hopper saying goodbye from Freedom Party for now. I'm Marion Boyd. As your new Democratic candidate in London Centre, I want you to consider the following questions. Why has David Peterson called this early, unnecessary election? 
What are the Liberals trying to hide? Why is Peterson making extravagant promises when he had a huge majority with a strong mandate to propose and carry out any legislation which he really intended to implement? Has David Peterson been an effective advocate for you and for London Centre during the last five years? The media is trying to tell us that this election is boring that you, the voters, are not asking the tough questions that David Peterson and the Liberals will manage to fool you into electing them once again. Well, I think the reporters are wrong. As I meet with you in your homes, at work, and in the street, you're telling me that you've had enough. Enough of David Peterson's arrogance. Enough of Peterson's broken promises enough of Peterson's cynical pursuit of power at any price. You're wondering why Peterson timed this election on the eve of the Patty Starr trial. You're asking what corruption will reveal itself when the funding links between the Liberals and the, uh, their developer friends are examined in the courts. You're asking why the auto insurance plan the Liberals promised has turned into a bonanza for their insurance company friends while you pay higher prices and are entitled to lower benefits. You're asking why Peterson caved into the Mulroney trade agreement when he promised to fight the deal. Why has Peterson done nothing to help the hundreds of workers who have lost their jobs and their futures as employers close plants and, re and revise their services in our community. And you wonder why the uh, environment has not been effectively cleaned up by the Liberals and polluters have not been charged in terms of their um, crimes against the environment. You're also demanding to know why your taxes have risen 28 times since Peterson became Premier, while health services and education are in a crisis and hundreds of our neighbors are homeless and hungry. I offer a single, simple answer to your questions and mine. David Peterson and the Liberals have run the government for the benefit of their rich and powerful friends. The large corporations, the developers, the insurance companies, the polluters, and the tax dodgers. Liberals have also uh, designed policies which protect the interests of their friends and supporters, not you and your families. New Democrats are accused of bringing to this election the same platform we've presented before. And that's true. Our programs were developed to answer the concerns and problems of you, working people, women, the young, the elderly, the disadvantaged. You expected the Liberals to make changes when you threw the Tories out in 1985, but your problems have not changed. Your concerns continue to be ignored by the Liberals as they were by the Tories. New Democrats are consistent. We always stand up for you. We know you deserve a just tax system in which the profitable corporations and the rich pay their fair share. We'll work to ensure you have access to affordable housing. We'll fight the GST, not manipulate the sales percentage to sales tax percentage to give an illusion of tax relief. New Democrats believe in a policy of full employment which ensures a just system of economic growth and strength in our province. New Democrats are not merely thinking that these are dreams. We know they can be reality. We have the political will and the commitment to achieve them. But we need your help. On September 6th, send David Peterson and his friends a message from the voters of London Centre by electing me Marion Boyd, New Democrat, as your member of Provincial Parliament. Good afternoon. I'm Terry Smart, and I'm running as an independent candidate in London Centre. I was born and raised here in London, attended Trafalgar Public School, Weevil Secondary School, and I've lived in London East in the Hamilton Road and Egerton Street area for 37 of my 38 years. I have been involved in the delivery of prescriptions for the past 20 years with Tyler and Zettel Pharmacy, which then became Zettel Pharmacy and is now called Zettel Big V. I also delivered for Turner Drugstore and Grand Ave 
for 12 and a half years and Ealing Pharmacy on Hamilton Road for one year. In my teenage years, I was also delivered newspapers for the free press in this area and worked in the mailroom also at the free press for seven years. You're probably wondering why someone like myself is running in this election. Actually, when I heard about this election being called by David Peterson's liberals, when they could have stayed in office for another two years, and the fact that it was going to cost you, the taxpayer, $40 million, that was it. I had had enough of the misuse of our tax dollars and was now motivated to try to do something about it. After all, you and I do pay the wages of these politicians through our tax dollars. Let's expand upon the $40 million it will cost for the upcoming election. Last week, I spoke with the manager of a local financial institution. Their best investment rate was 12.13%. Now, let's take that $40 million and invest it instead of having an election. After one year, it will have accumulated $8,412,000 in interest alone. We now have $48,412,000. After two years, it will have accumulated another $10,311,000 in additional interest. Now we have $58,723,000. So this election is not really costing us $40 million, but closer to $60 million because we will have lost the opportunity to earn nearly $20 million in interest. Our education system seems to be lacking something these days, too. The government continues to cut back funds that are distributed to the universities, college, colleges, and learning institutions. These facilities need just as much money as they did before, if not more. So let's not cut back on these budgets. Let's either keep them level where they sit now, or even increase them slightly. This is a wonderful investment in the students of our future. The money is already there. It just needs to be spent more wisely. With relation to jobs, you and I both know we can't survive very long without having some money coming in from somewhere. So what are we doing to protect the jobs that we already have? Mr. Peterson prides himself and his Liberal Party about creating 700,000 new jobs but what is he really doing to protect these jobs that are already there? Either David Peterson is extremely uninformed or he is totally an uncaring man because it, there just happens to be 75 individuals at Victoria Hospital that will be losing their jobs the very same day as the election as well as 37 hospital beds being shut down. Is this the way we protect our health care system? My heart goes out to these people because I really care about them and their future and I will do everything in my power to keep those jobs alive and well. After all, they do deserve a better fate. The GST will also cost more money. So speak out loudly and if it takes a national tax revote day across Canada to get your voice heard in Ottawa, do it. This is a democracy and it is your right to do so. In short, we need more honesty and straight answers in politics today, and certainly more responsible pen spending of our tax dollars. So don't take it anymore. Get upset like me. Yes, you the voters of London Centre, vote against this Peterson government so Ontario will have some new faces in office that will really care about you doing something constructive and not destructive. Thank you very much for your time and have a great day. Hello everybody, my name is Sid Tarleton and I'm an independent candidate for the riding of London Centre. Today I would like to talk to you about issues that may seem unimportant to people in Ontario, but actually do have a very important impact on what is happening in Ontario. This is particu in particularly, this is the Middle East crisis and its effect on what will happen in world events in the days and weeks to come. The Middle East war is being waged in the, in the uh, Persian Gulf right at the moment. 
as a diversionary tactic against the policies of Brian Mulroney and George Bush, Margaret Thatcher, and others. And that's, that's number one reason for it. And the number two reason for it is it is a policy to destroy the revolutionary events that are happening in Europe, particularly the unification of the two Germanys into one Germany. Why this would have an effect on Germany is because the threat of a Middle East war, which is a very real threat, threatens to escalate the prices of crude oil, which are traded in American dollars, which would therefore prop up the American dollar, and would also help out the Soviet economy, which, is also, which also has something of a uh, oil, uh, oil production capacity. And more importantly, because there's very little in the way of nuclear power in Germany, they depend on oil to fuel its economy, the unification of Germany would come to a standstill because the economic, they would not be able to get an economic motor going in Germany. The problem for that for Ontario is, is that German unification and generally the European economy is still salvageable. Here in Ontario, we have a situation, and in most of the Western countries, we have a situation where the Ontario where the economies are basically bankrupt. We, we can evidence this in, in the health care system, in, in uh, constant cutbacks in education, and so on. There is no capital left to be funding an economy. However, there is remnants of an economy in Europe. And a vital link to this is a proposal that has been put forward by the statesman Lyndon, U.S. statesman and political prisoner Lyndon Hermiel LaRouche, which is known as the Paris... Berlin-Vienna railway triangle using high-speed magnetically levitated trains to transport freight and people in this corridor. This would become an economic engine in Europe which would have far-ranging effects for us over here in Europe or er, in Ontario. How could we get involved in this? Ontario could get involved in this by exporting its nuclear its nuclear production ability. Ontario is one of the few areas in the world that actually has a nuclear power capability. Now, the CANDU reactor apparently is considered by some people in Ontario Hydro to be inefficient, but we can certainly develop new ones and use these reactors to get Germany off of its oil dependency and get it on to nuclear, reactor, or nuclear uh, power. The other advantage to us is that we also have a railway manufacturing capability right here in London in the form of the General Motors Diesel Division, which could be advanced to start producing magnetically levitated trains as opposed to the very archaic diesel electric trains that are still being produced and have been produced for the last few years. The purpose of why I'm mentioning all this, of course, is, is that without a European development, we can't have any development here in Ontario. And Ontario can be involved and should be involved in these issues. David Peterson and Mike Harris and Bob Ray are going around debating such issues as uh, such pagan issues as, as environmentalism and generally, you know, yuppie related issues that have that are geared towards, uh, you know, what what can you do for me candidate. I think it's time that the people in Ontario and, and the po political uh, people and the, the politicians in Ontario develop a more outward view and to this extent, I would suggest that uh, they concentrate their, en the, their, uh, their energies on an economic development in, East Ger in, in West Germany and how it can be developed here in Ontario. Thank you very much. Dear voters, I am Jan van Gelder and running for Londen Centre. It is a privilege and an honour to speak to you. First of all, I'd like to ask your vote, not for mine locks, please, but for our policy of the Family Coalition Party. This is your alternative. If we vote, you ask yourself, is it right to vote family, po family coalition party or liberal, PC or NDP? And why not? Where do you stand for? For instance, larger homes, newer cars, 
or a family to come home to? Or are you on a handout? 1% reduction in the sales tax? Or the PC? We build a new hospital for everyone. Eh? You like the setup, euthanasia, abortion, fetus research, all in one hospital? I give it to you, said PC Mr. Harris. Does he have respect for human life? Is he God? I ask you, the voter. Or are we building a, perfer a perfect human race? You mean no more wheelchairs? Some people who are not perfect? You fill in the blanks. I hope the PC thinks that I am perfect. Otherwise, euthanasia is for me too. But the NDP does the same thing. They have the same policy. We, you and I, have to start to rebuild our family. Your future today. Your chance is the 6th of September. If you don't, you have to wait five more years. Don't fool yourself. Don't let others fool you. The policy is more important. We have to restore law and order in the province. If we don't, a person like Morgenthaler will continue on. The store openings and Sunday. No more day of rest. Families only work and work. It's a Stalin era. We are in a time of prosperity and the tax are going up and up. Do you ask what are you doing with my money? One example, Italy, 1,000 a room, Mr. Premier. Is that why your tax are going up? Do they are living on your children's money? Do you care or do they care? I hope your vote is better spent by people who care. I have a short story to tell. You are in the same area, you youth of today. You are in the same era as I was in 48, 49. And Father van der Vrande had a radio speaker, was asked, do the younger generation care? He asked the younger generation to come out to Utrecht to show the support from every nook of the country, bus, train, car and bike, and they walked and they came out. Utrecht was invaded by youth. An area was packed, the churches were full, and outside the young, the young people waited for his speech. I ask you voters, vote for the party that cares. Thank you. My name is Ann Callan, and with me today is Mark Handelman, the progressive conservative candidate for London Centre. Mark, we're now nearing the end of the campaign for the election of the new government of Ontario. What is the main issue that you're finding as you meet with the voters in London Centre? And every day I go out and try and meet as many voters as I can. And what I see and hear is that people are concerned about taxes and concerned about where the money is going. This government has raised taxes or invented new taxes 33 separate times in the past five years. A dollar of provincial tax in 1985 is $2.32 worth of provincial tax today. The voters don't think, and I don't think, we've gotten our money's worth out of this government. The second issue is the representation that they're getting in London Centre. They don't believe they're being fairly represented at Queen's Park. 
London is well known across Canada and in many parts of the world as a distinguished centre for medical research and treatment. Yet many beds have been closed in London hospitals and people are actually dying while they await, while they await treatment. What needs to be done in your view to fix this medical spending mess? A few things. First of all, Mr. Peterson promised 4,000 new hospital beds across the province in his 1987 campaign, and we've lost beds, not gained hospital beds across this province. Even so, the cost of medical care in this province has escalated dramatically in the past three years. The money is not being spent wisely. The reason the money isn't being spent wisely is because the government is confrontational with the doctors, with the nurses, and with hospital boards. They're not asking people who provide the service how it should be provided. They're telling people how to do it, and they've been wrong in too many cases. Those costs have gotten out of control. The way to solve the problem is to work with the people who provide the care to find the solutions. It's not an issue of more money. It's an issue of better spent money. Thank you. There has been a lot of criticism of tax increases by the Liberal government in Ontario. What are you finding as the view of the voters? I'm finding that the voters are outraged by the amount of taxes that they're paying, and they're outraged when they hear of the examples of how this government has wasted their money. For example, the 84-85 budget for rent review in the province of Ontario was $7.4 million. Today, it's $41.2 million for this fiscal year. In 1989-1990, the government passed legislation to enforce support orders made in favor of parents with children against the separated spouse. It costs $6,100 per order to enforce those orders. It would simply be easier to give the money to those individuals. This government is wasting money. Taxes are rising at an alarming rate and people don't like it anymore. Do you think that David Peterson does a good job on behalf of the people of London Centre, or is it really too much to expect that the Premier can also work on behalf of his constituents? And the primary obligation of any MPP is to represent the constituents who elected that person. If they can't do other things and represent fairly at the same time, then they shouldn't have the position. I don't think Mr. Peterson, as Premier, has continued to represent the voters of London Centre to the, to the extent that he should have, and I'm finding that people agree with me as I go door to door through the riding. They're concerned about the confrontational nature of his government, and they're concerned about his style, and they're concerned about the fact that he appears to be bending over backwards not to be seen to favour London Centre which means that the voters are not being fairly represented in this riding, and I'd like to replace them, if only for that reason alone. Which brings me to my last question. Why Mark Handelman? What do you feel you have to offer to the voters of London Centre? And the first thing is, I have a reputation that I think I've earned for answering questions with straight answers. People may not always like what I say, but at least they know where I stand. Secondly, I think I've generated some good solutions in the past in this community through the Better Business Bureau, the Chamber of Commerce, the Special Ability Riding Institute. Common sense and working with people solves problems that other methods can't. I think that's what government needs. That's what I'd like to bring. Hi, my name is Al Pembleton, and I'm the uh, local organizer for the Communist Party of Canada here in the City of London. Uh, today, we're going to be very briefly uh, chatting with uh, Assam Mansour, who's the Communist candidate running in London Centre. Um, Assam, uh, welcome. And Thanks, uh, first of all, what I'd like to do is uh, ask you to uh, tell the people a little bit about your background. Okay, my name is Assam Mansour. I'm uh, 26 years old. I uh, joined the Communist Party three years ago. Um, originally, I was in, uh, in university studying to uh, get my degree in physics, and I was uh, uh, very much angered by uh, the uh, uh, lack of uh, uh, respect and lack of, uh, uh, rather, the, the inability of youth to uh, put in their two cents in this world. And uh, for those reasons and many others, I joined the Communist Party. 
And uh, about eight months ago, I became uh, the uh, provincial organizer for, uh, for the party in Ontario. And uh, here I am again in London. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's very interesting. Thank you very much. Uh, like, like myself, probably uh, quite a number of individuals within the city of London and the surrounding area are, have never met a communist. And it's been quite a while since we, uh, we actually ran a candidate. So uh, many people are probably wondering, just what is a communist? Well, uh, it seems more than ever that we're in the news these days. Uh, uh, communists from Europe and uh, communists from South Africa. And uh, I think it's time that uh, uh, people realize that, that there are communists in Canada and we have a long history, over 70 years in this country. And we are Canadian communists, above all. And uh, a Canadian communist is someone who fights for uh, social justice in this country, fights for democracy. Uh, essentially what that means is putting the power in the people's hands rather than in the, in the hands of corporations and uh, big business. Okay, uh, very good. Uh, I, w I would imagine that uh, going door to door that uh, you probably hear uh, quite a bit on the, uh, on the doorstep from the odd person about uh, what's going on in Eastern Europe uh, with the uh, supposed uh, myth of uh, the collapse of communism. Would you like to say a few words about that? Well, uh, certainly the media has done its job on, on uh, bringing forth the idea that uh, 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 socialism has been destroyed in, uh, in Eastern Europe and uh, Central Europe and uh, communists have been discredited all over the world. Uh, as a matter of fact, we see that uh, uh, in Eastern Europe, uh, with the exception perhaps of uh, one or two countries, um, there has been a peaceful transition to, uh, uh, to a democra democratic form of life where uh, socialism has been uh, embedded uh, with uh, democracy and the uh, return of power into people's hands rather than uh, uh, bureaucracy and uh, just uh, ineptness in certain areas of, uh, of life, whether, whether it is culture or, or uh, down to the factory uh, level. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it is a myth indeed. Uh, it, is a, it is a renewal. It is a, uh, a renewal of ideas. It is, an, it, it is bringing democracy forth. It is putting the power into the people's hands. And that's why we see uh, several communist parties over in Eastern Europe still surviving, still going strong. Okay, that sounds like a very good uh, and reasonable answer. Uh, the next question that I'd uh, like to ask you is uh, certainly uh, we're asking the voters in London Centre to uh, judge the party not on its ideology, but, uh, but of course rather on the party's platform. Could you tell us a little bit about the provincial platform of the Communist Party? Or I'd like to think that our platform is derived from ideology, which is uh, the struggle for social justice and democracy, and and it is reflected in, in our platform. Uh, uh, top top on our list is is uh, the concern uh, on the of the effects of the free trade uh, on on Ontario mainly. Uh, uh, we want to stop the plant closures and the plant uh, and uh, plants shutting down and running away uh, down to the states or to Mexico, and uh, taking the jobs away from Ontario from Ontarians. Um, plant shutdowns hurt uh, working people and uh, that uh, takes away from the wealth of Ontario. Um, so we'd like, we'd like legislation, we'd like to see legislation to stop plant shutdowns. Um, we'd like to see uh, the minimum wage raised to 7.50 an hour because it, it, is, uh, it is impossible uh, these days to live on, uh, on uh, the wages that are being given these days. Uh, we'd like to see, uh, we'd like to see uh, work on the environment and uh, uh, improvement, imp improvement in, uh, in environmental uh, work such, for example, uh, wow. uh, we're, seeing, we're seeing a lot of acid, acid rain problems, we're, like, we're seeing cutdowns of trees, we're seeing the export of tritium which, which is used in nuclear bombs by the United States, we'd like to stop that.